As there's a drive in a deep left field by Castellanos, it will be. Oh man, it's eight o'clock. And so that'll make it a. I don't need the spotlight. I shine just fine. Hi, I'm Karma, and yes, I am a bitch. Brav Bros. E-A-T-L-E-S, Eagles! Good evening, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Brav Bros, your favorite podcast from the bros for everybody, for whoever wants to listen. I am your co-host, Steel Russell, joined, as always, by the one, the only, Skeet Scoots Magoots. What's up, dude? Uh, highly emotional week. Yeah. Highly emotional week. And not for the reason that you think. Oh, really? That Last of Us episode? Oh, my God. Look, this is we, we talk about no free ads. This one deserves a free ad. I don't give a shit. Great show. Go watch it. Last of Us on HBO. Third episode, Nick Offerman, Ron Swanson. It has emotionally abused me all week. I texted our video game group. Yes, we have a video game group. Shout out to the dads. Woo! Yeah, we're nerds. Um, <laughs> but I texted you guys like immediately after it ended, and I was afraid I was going to give up spoilers, but I was like, this is one of the greatest episodes of TV I think I've ever watched. It was so unexpected. It was so emotional. Nick Offerman was incredible. I think the uh, he acted alongside, I think it's Murray Bartlett, I believe is his name. I think it's so, the, yeah. Uh, it's the guy from season one. Manager White from White Lotus, yeah. yeah. And... The love story between the two of them was so beautiful, and just, like, I told Dev, I was like, look, I know you don't like zombie shows, but, like, we have to watch this episode because it's remarkable, like, yeah, just it was, for what it was. it's a standalone, and honestly, it was, it was just so beautifully well done, and obviously, look, I mean, when emotions are running high after the Eagles make the Super Bowl, whoop, whoop, we're not going to harp on it because we expect it to be here, so fuck it. And you know what? <laughs> there was, and we don't even have to get to the Rosenthorn. There was somebody out there that was like, I don't tune into your fucking podcast to listen about the Eagles. I went to an Eagles game, and I was at the Spectrum. Like, shut the fuck up. Shut up. We have personality. <laughs> I'm sorry that we're not fucking Bravo robots that are sitting here like, oh, well, let's just talk about that. No. We have lives outside of Bravo. Other people enjoy it. You don't. Sit your sad ass down. Maybe go watch The Last of Us and cry a little bit like we did. All right. Anyway, motion's running high. <laughs> I tweeted it out, and I said, We're, this, the, these next couple episodes fiery. are going to be unstable. Are you okay? No. That's like... Feeling great. That that sounded like a me rant. Oh, yeah. No, I'm, I, getting, I, I'm, I I'm it a little bit. Fired up. But, yeah, no, feeling great. You know, I'm just expecting a little Super Bowl. We got a week off, so... I would like to say it's going to be like a little roller coaster that's going to come back down and then go back up, but it's probably just going to ride high for the next week. So, mind your business. Yeah, you know? no, I'm I'm right there with you. I took a much different approach, probably like the complete opposite end of the spectrum here. So I worked out today, and then I went to do a little. I've been doing meditation a lot lately. Mm -hmm. I've been trying to get back into it because it helps my brain kind of like settle down. Yeah, I'm in the sauna. We have a sauna at the gym now. It's it's amazing. That's and great. when no one else is using it, like the trainers can just hop in whenever. So I'm sitting in the sauna doing like a little 20 minute meditation. And it was like about getting in touch with like your surroundings and like being present, all that stuff. At the end was like, and now like while you're calm in your meditative state, ask the universe for something that you need support in. And I shit you not organically, it just popped into my brain. Birds need to win the Super Bowl. <laughs> need the birds to win the Super Bowl. And I got out of the the sauna. I was like, "Wow, that was that was genuine. That just like came from the heart. Like that's where my soul focus is right now. Is like, I don't care about anything else at the moment. I need the birds to win the bowl, and all will be well. Everything will be great. Everything will be great. And uh, look, I mean, like I said, I tweeted it out that we were going to be unstable for the next couple of weeks. Uh, we got a lot of support. You know, somebody actually said, "Go with God, go birds." Woo! Like, hell yeah! So, I will. Let's get to like the rose and thorn kind of. I'm gonna kind of make it a broad one, but I think for my like overall rose was the overwhelming support from non football fans mm -hmm. that they were like, I don't even watch football, but because of you guys, I'm now watching the Eagles and I am rooting for them. Go birds! And they're all saying go birds. And actually, I will read one because it like kind of it culminated in one of the best messages we've received simply because of who it's from. Okay. Okay. So I get a, a message and I'm like, you know, I try to get to as many as I can. Yeah. And this one stood out because the last name is McInerney. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, so that's my wife's last name. There you go. So I was like, oh, wow, McInerney. Mm-hmm. I was like, <laughs> I thought it might be like a cousin or something like that. So, and I had to ask her how to pronounce her name because <laughs> she's from Dublin, Ireland, and moved to Vancouver. Yeah, we're all over the world. Yeah, and she, her name is Sive, like five, but with an S. Okay. Because it's spelled S-A-D-H-B-H. Okay. Yeah, and I can't it pronounce. Take me like I can't six months to process that I one. I can't but all right. pronounce like normal people's Instagram handles, so like I had no shot. So she helped me out. Wow. It's from Sive McInerney. My boyfriend and I are Irish and living in Canada, but we started watching NFL after listening to the podcast. I told him this is now an Eagles house, and he has no choice. Go Fuck birds! Yeah. Fuck yeah! And that's the right attitude. All right, if he doesn't want to be a birds fan, you tell him he is a birds fan, and he doesn't have a choice. All right, we we bleed green, man. We bleed green. And that takes me to all of my thorns, which is the 49ers fans of the world. And I will read his name because genuinely I did appreciate the shit talking. And this person's um, Instagram profile picture is legit an arm with all of the World Series that the uh, Giants have won okay. tattooed on the arm. So like it's a real fan. No, but I it's it's not a fair weather 49ers fan. We got a no, lot of but... we had a lot of California people chiming in like uh oh, boo and I'm like you don't even there's no way that you give a shit about this game. Yeah. And so like I said, the profile picture is all of the World Series, all right? And he started talking shit to us way before the game started. Like he sent me a picture of the lighthouse in San Francisco like lit up with the 49ers logo on it and like Sick, all dude. this other <laughs> so really help you. After we won, I didn't say shit to him. And I said, I, like, once we win, I'm going to come back and I'm talking all the shit. I didn't yeah. say a word because I didn't have to. The game spoke for itself. They scored seven points. What a joke. This game was ruined by cheating Eagles, first score, bullshit refs, dirty plays, go Bengals. Not only that, but on the pitch. Go Bengals. Because he wanted Joe Burrow to win after they, like, he was now putting his faith in another team, I well, guess. He lost twice. Yeah, he's Ofer. I'm an idiot. Yeah, Tim, you're Ofer, buddy. So you don't Jesus, get to talk Tim. shit anymore. But we did tie it up. Like you know, he was he was nice at the end of the exchange, but it just made me laugh because on our stories, he kept commenting because we were both at the Kanji Corner, yeah. yeah, like drunken slobs, like just throwing like Philly <laughs> insults that everyone always uses at us, like scumbags, dirtbags, oh, all that shit. But yeah, Tim, Niners stink. Birds rule. Go birds. Oh my god, that's so funny. Um, yeah, no, I mean going back on how did you say that girl's name? Sive. Sive. All right, going back on Sive's comment, you could say that we may have influenced <laughs> her and her boyfriend to become Eagles fans, right? You might be able to say that. I th- I feel like that's that's the appropriate word. You know what? Well, not for this person, all right? Because oh. I took a page out of your book and I went through our reviews. And look, I mean, we have a lot of high reviews, a lot of people love us. But the one stars are, I don't even care. They're just funny. They're so They're good. Just They're usually really funny. So this is one that I missed. The title of this review is Not Influenced. I've seen this. I'm so glad you're reading it. Yep. They take credit. Cre- create it. Create it. They take credit. <laughs> <laughs> they can create it. They do that. They take credit for quote unquote influencing things like Andy apologizing to Garcelle. Um, dot, 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 check Reddit slash Twitter. They cloaked that in real time. Cloaked that in real time. Clocked, probably. And it trended. Men taking credit for women's work once again. Oh, my God. God. You know, the problem with that whole situation, I remember that pretty vividly. A lot of people were pointing out that they thought that it was us that influenced Andy to do that. That was probably actually predates me calling us influencers, if I'm not mistaken, but... Who the hell knows? Just shut up. Like, <laughs> like, it's one thing if you were like making a joke, but clearly you listen to us because that's a running joke. The influencer thing, the quote unquote influencers, that's a running joke in our podcast. So clearly you're listening to the podcast. Don't give us one star because you got mad that we're quote unquote taking credit for someone else's work. We're not. A lot of people said that we did it and we ran with it. What the fuck do you want? The, uh, the breadcrumbs are there if you will. <laughs> so, I, you know, whatever. Um, I fully agree yeah no not go. with you with oh, the review yeah <laughs> all right my rose while i also went down that review rabbit hole and this was just a little, a little solid for me it made me feel pretty good uh it's a solid listen shooter is so funny steel has a great voice their takes aren't always on point but makes for a good listen 
would help if they had timestamps, but not everyone watches all the shows. I get it. We now have timestamps. We do so have timestamps. you do want to make sure that you listen to a specific point or whatever, we have timestamps, so it's okay. Uh, I just like that they said that I was really funny. You know, I you have a great voice. We've heard that before, but being called funny is nice. You know, I'm not gonna let that go to my head. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what? I liked it. It was a four out of five, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I liked it because it was an honest review. It's yes, I appreciate honesty. You don't have to like pander to us. Like if it's a four out of five, and you give you know it's a solid listen. I don't agree with all their takes. Four out of five. Well done review. Yeah, honestly, I'm not saying Love don't it. wait, wait. I'm not saying don't give us five star reviews. I'm just saying that was an honest take, and I, I appreciate the honesty. But um, this is a reunion episode, so we have to kind of speed through the rest of this. So mm-hmm. let's touch on the news real quick, just because there's a couple things that are pertinent to the current shows that we're watching, such as Roslick might be saved because we have the second coming of the prophet, <laughs> Mary Cosby. She's coming back. You don't have any experience with her. No, no. I, I went back and skipped through a couple different episodes just to see if I could get used to her because we did talk about this, about her potentially coming back at some point. I know, I think it was before Salt Lake started. We yeah. were talking about her maybe coming back just to save the show because we already knew that Jem was going to have to go away. I, I have mixed feelings because she was funny for TV. Probably not in real life. She's probably terrible to be around in real life, I imagine. Oh, yeah. I could not I could not imagine being near her, no. No. But I just don't know if this show is going to be saved, you know? And she's coming back in a friend of slot, too. She's not a even friend a of. cast member. So are they just going to run with four and then have her as a friend of and then... I heard that none of the, like, Angie's or Dana's are coming back. No, they all got whacked. I think what's going to happen, I think they're bringing new people on. Okay. I think I saw there's two, maybe three. Mm-hmm. Here's the thing. The show's going to have to stand on somebody's back, right? It's going to need to be carried, such as a Jen Shaw, right? Mm-hmm. Or, like, a Teresa. I'm not comparing Jen Shaw and Teresa. I'm just saying, like... Oh. Uh, a lot of our listeners really want us to do lot, that. Yeah, I know, we'll, but we're not going. <laughs> we're not going to. But it needs that headliner because Mary Cosby, even if she wasn't a friend of, is definitely not the star. She mm-hmm. is comedic relief. She's off the rails, but you can't build a show around her. Mm-hmm. Can Lisa step into that role? I don't know. I don't know if Lisa can carry it alone. I just don't think she gets the support from the other cast members that we see. Like, people are afraid of Teresa. People are afraid of Karen, in a sense. Like, the the big, like, ringleaders, if you will, of the Housewife franchises, people are either afraid of them or they support them blindly. Lisa gets none of that. Yeah, so I think, you know, she's entertaining enough yeah. to carry it. Yeah, I just don't know if she's going to have the support. And like you said, I, I guess it's almost like reverence, like mm-hmm. kind of shying away from, like, the alpha, if you will. Yeah. But um, I don't know. It'll be – I'm – I'm now intrigued enough, and maybe that's exactly why they did it. I will watch next season because Mary is back, and yeah. she's that much of a wild card that I'll tune in to the I'm first. I'm surprised that we got notice. I, I guess they do have to start filming pretty soon, right? I would, I would think. They haven't even started filming Beverly Hills yet. Well, that's because they were on a hiatus. Yeah, I know, but they pushed it. we don't know how long that's going to be, so I feel like they kind of moved some of the timelines up because... Oh, wait, I thought they started filming recently. I think they did. I think Beverly Hills sure? started. Yeah, I think so. I don't know, because Sutton's in Paris right now. Oh. Yeah. And I know Garcelle was somewhere. Which, by the way, we forgot to talk about. Garcelle putting out some Eagles love. Love that. Did you not see that? No. How did you oh not my send God. that to me? Uh, I think I saw it on Twitter, but I wasn't really paying attention. Maybe it was just like a scroll through. Okay. But a couple of our listeners, followers, actually tweeted back at us and said, you better talk about Garcelle supporting the birds. I think she put up, I think it was an Instagram story now that I'm thinking about it. And it was like a picture of Jalen Hurts and said, like, go birds, love Jalen, blah, blah, blah. Like, fuck Hell yeah. yeah. Garcelle's on our team? Yeah. That's great got news. got Garcelle on our team. Yeah, but Crystal's a, a Rams fan, and so is Sutton. It's like, <laughs> boo. I don't know. Sutton's like a college football fan, which I get Southern attitude. At least she's not a Cowboys fan. That's a but, good point. Um, yeah, no, I saw that like the, the filming schedule's crazy. Um, Salt Lake starts next week filming already. They just finished the reunion, so they get like no time off. Really? They yeah. They start filming on the thirteenth. You know what? I think and that's then Jen Shaw more goes to prison on the seventeenth. Common than you think, because the reunion doesn't film until the season is done airing. Mm-hmm. So they have more time off than in between the reunion. Yeah, and yeah, the yeah. Actual. So yeah. I, I think get that's that. fairly common with the turnaround. Honestly, yeah. I think it. I think that it's more surprising that Beverly Hills maybe hasn't started filming yet, because it's like usually like 
pretty close after yeah. it um, finishes their final seat or the final episode of the last season. Yeah. So I, I don't really know how that's going to work out, but I, you know what? It does look like a lot of work goes into that off season, if you will, though. Did you see that binder that Lisa had tonight? Yeah. Holy shit. She must've been working on that thing from like the end of filming till the reunion. I think that you work on it during the season. You see shit pop up. You're like, Oh, we need a receipt. Oh, need a receipt. You keep you keep kind of building up your start ammo. Printing out iMessage receipts just to for like just goofs. to have them, just goofs, and I'll fold up in my back pocket and just like whip it out and be just like, break it out and be like, well, yeah. you said that, yeah, and just have it be something totally benign, just like, oh, hey, just when are you like going one to the of bar? my jokes that yeah. I thought was funny <laughs> that I sent to somebody that you don't even know, I'll be like, read this one, it's pretty hey, good. I got a receipt for you. Boop. I yeah. like that. I, if you pull that, like when we go watch the Super Bowl, if you pull something out of your pocket and hand it to me, I will. Between that and if the birds win or when the birds win. That'll be the greatest day of my life. Yeah, that would be a great absolutely. bit. It's a good bit. That'll now, bit. my only question is, where the fuck were we? Quite the tangent, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> no. Steel just looked still... at me like he forgot that we were podcasting. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It was a loaded question. Um, no, I mean, we just, I want to touch on, there's two more things, and they kind of go one and the same, only because they are these kind of split off shows that we're seeing. And it sounds like Rony Legacy may have gotten the axe. And I know that you are not bummed out at all about that. Nope. Yeah, Shooter didn't want to see it. I wanted to see what they could do. I wanted to give them, like, two episodes to to sway me, but I was not confident. I saw a picture of, um, <laughs> it actually really made me laugh. It was a picture of Luann reading the Page Six article about Roni Legacy getting the axe. Oh, really? She looked, quote-unquote, on edge. Oh. <laughs> and it's like, I, I don't know how you see it. Like, she was just reading a fucking article. But it was funny that she was actually reading the article about it getting axed. At some restaurant, like having some coffee or something in the morning. And yeah, not mad about it at all. I thought it was going to be a train wreck. I thought, no, I didn't think it was going to be a train wreck, honestly. I thought that it was going to be interesting for about two to three episodes, and then everybody would realize why they no longer watched or wanted to watch Roni. Oh, uh, okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. we needed new blood. We needed a lot of new things going on. And it was just more of the same. I feel like two to three episodes in, you're going to be like, all right, uh, Dorinda, no. Can we look up the TV, please? <laughs> like, we had enough of you on Ultimate Girls Trip. Los, outdoor Los, I'm talking to you, buddy. But, yeah, I, I don't know. I'm not super sad that it got the axe. What, I, are, I would what just, are you feeling? First, like, to comment, I love the hateful bromance that has blossomed between you and Los. Oh, yeah. And yeah. he messaged us today. He bought one of our T-shirts. So yeah, good, good job, Los. <laughs> <laughs> this love-hate relationship that's going to hopefully continue for yeah. the tenure of this podcast. But the other one is um, an Ultimate Girls Trip moment, and I'm excited for the next two seasons of Ultimate Girls Trip, and there's been a lot of drama coming out of them, but this one involves your girl Brandy and an OG Caroline Manzo, Mm -hmm. and I guess Brandy was trying to kiss her as we saw her do in the last Ultimate Girls Trip with, was it Tamara? I think so. Yeah. No, camera. no. Camera was okay with it. It was um Vicky wasn't Vicky having it. Was Vicky wasn't having, having it. it. Vicky wasn't having it. I guess Caroline was not having it either. And from the article, it sounds like she did kiss her multiple times against Caroline Manzo's will. It got pretty messy. I think they asked Brandy to leave the next day because of that, because it was inappropriate, and then Caroline decided to leave of her own volition because she just didn't want to be Brandy there. Left too. Brandy was told to leave. Yeah, but then I, Caroline also. Caroline left. then left, yeah. but Caroline left because she wanted to leave. Brandy yeah. was asked to leave because she was inappropriate. Oh, it's man. it's gross. It's it's a nasty situation. It's not think, great. I just think that show. And isn't Brandy going to be popping up in OC now too? We got rumors that she might be in Beverly Hills. I thought. I thought she was seen with Tamra in OC. I don't know. I mean, weird look, show. there's I, I, look. speculation. I guess, like, she does make for, like, relatively interesting TV, but at the end of the day, like, do you really want shit like that to happen? Well, you can't be out here kissing people that don't want to be kissed. Like, period. That's all. That's it. There's no more that really needs to be said. You can't do that. She doesn't want you to kiss her. Fucking don't. Definitely don't double and triple down, as the article states. Yeah, I just, I think this is, like, the dangerous waters that you get with Ex-Wives Club. Is that everybody? I, I don't think that Brandy's like pining for a position anywhere. I think this is truly just who she is and what she does usually when she gets drunk. But it just doesn't make for great TV. No, nah. sorry, but like it's just not. I think the the shtick will run its course mm-hmm. before the season does. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I think she's good for an ultimate girl strip because it's what five six episodes. It's not, yeah. you know, I don't think that you put her on a full time if she's pulling this shit all the time. It's gonna like you said, it's gonna get old. Yep. It's gonna get old real fast. But um. 
we've already lingered for too long. We got to move on. And um, the good thing is we only have three shows to cover this week, so we can get through it a little bit quicker. But um, we're back in Miami, and I actually I couldn't sleep last night. Are you dancing? Because yeah. welcome to Miami. Miami yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're back in Miami. And you know what? I'm going to do this just once because we got a new soundboard. And this thing is legit. We used to use this like piece of shit little box that I would have to tweak because it would sound like shit. Everyone always complained that our volumes were too low. You can blame this stupid box yeah. because we had no idea how to use it. We did our best. But now we got this fancy podcasting machine. And I can say, we are back in Miami and do this. <laughs> we got DJ sound effects. The best is I can't even actually really hear it. It just, no. it just plays out of like a headphone somewhere in the room. I'm like, Jesus. Yeah. But so it worked really well for Miami. Yeah, no, that's why I wanted to that's use it just once. They were once. playing at that lingerie party. We'll play the clip. The lingerie right. party. Every time we bring oh, it yeah, up. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we got to play the clip. You mentioned the lingerie party. You got to... Play the clip yep. where the girl gets smacked on the butt, and there's three people walking around in laundry, and it's wildly uncomfortable. So <laughs> Honestly, we saw Lenny at the end of this episode, so I'm surprised that we didn't get the clip. I, I'm, oh, dude, I was like, I didn't want to see him on the screen, and he looks so scummy in there. We'll, we'll get to that part. Uh, yeah, yeah, I would save it. We got to save it. it. I know, and we're like, you know, we're unhinged. We're unhinged. We're unhinged. I'm unhinged, shooter. <laughs> <laughs> but we get back into it, and... um. It's still at Nicole's party. This whole scene's kind of weird to me, and we don't watch. I don't watch these until like the day before the podcast, so mm-hmm. it's already been out for a while. So I I read a lot of comments of like people talking about how they felt about the episode, and everyone kept bringing up Alexia, 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 and you know I've already turned on Alexia. I think I liked her the first episode that we saw her because yeah. we didn't know any better. Like yeah. we hadn't seen her. I kind of liked everybody, honestly. Yeah, that's true. That's true, but. What she's saying to Nicole is it just doesn't make any sense to me. Like she's defending Larsa. She's saying like you like we saw last week, but it's like you you can say whatever you want to say. Anybody can say whatever they want to say. Which is ridiculous. Which is I think I I don't know if she was just saying it like, look, people are going to talk shit no matter what. Or if she was actually supporting Larsa. I think it's the latter. Uh, She's definitely supporting Larsa because the whole episode she's just like she's picking and choosing these battles where it doesn't make any sense. Like she just doesn't make any fucking Mm -hmm. sense with what she's like saying. I don't get when she's at the lawyer thing and we'll get there later, but she seems to take umbrage with literally every single thing Nicole does, no matter what it can be completely unrelated to her. And she still jumps in. Like, why are you defending Larsa? Larsa was wrong to sit at Nicole's party and defend Larsa makes no fucking sense to me. Marisol doesn't help the situation. And I will say, like, you got that one confessional where Marisol's like, can I, can I have a new best friend? friend? Yeah. Like, at least she's aware of that. But, yeah, but in the moment, she's still defending her. That's what I'm saying. So you completely negate your point, And you can stand by your best friend in a moment where they're being a dumbass mm-hmm. by just not saying anything. Yeah. Like, you just let them go. And then later, you'd be like, yo, dude, what the fuck was that? Like, that wasn't a good look. But in the moment, you don't have to embarrass them in front of everybody. You yeah. can let them shoot themselves in the foot. And then you clean up the wound for yeah. them. But no, and then you get that right on the, I don't know, what's the reverse of on the heels? On the toes? On the toes? That would be that the opposite phrase? of it. Should we do that? On the toes? Let's start that. We're going to do that. So, like, if, if something. This is, what if this is already a term and now you're taking credit for starting a term? Yeah, I'm going to contact the dictionary. Someone needs to knock um, you down a peg. <laughs> <laughs> so, on the toes of that, uh, we get Alexia and Adriana and Thierry, our boy. Who oh, my God. I thought, if I'm, if I'm Thierry, I'm I'm pissed off. I, I'm like, same. What the fuck? Like, who is this woman? Why is she talking shit? Why is she digging up my records? It makes absolutely no sense. Was his remark necessary at all? The can you read? No, no but but he did recover. I thought a little bit. Where I, he I was like, recovery was he's like, do you have your glasses? Yeah, right do you have your glasses. Like, I was like, Jesus, good dude, save, dumbass. Just fucking lean into it. Like, if you're really, if you're just gonna like completely insult her. You gotta just, just say, "Can you, you read?" You gotta just leave it there. Because it's funny, at least. Like, it, it, somebody might get a laugh out of it. But if I you did. try to recover, just be like, "Eh." But it, look, I, at the same time, Alexia blows up because she's like, "Oh, what are you questioning me and uh, calling me an idiot?" Essentially, it's like, "No, but you were a huge asshole and went through his public records to prove that he was still married." Which later you found out that you didn't even fucking read the thing. So well, you know what? Let's you, bring it up. Can you read? Like, that's what I'm saying. Like there was that was the best vindication I've ever seen. Because but it would have been so funny if somebody was there or like, look, I could see Julia, I could see Nicole making that joke, just being like, 
<laughs> Shit, can you read? Yeah, I mean, I thought it was a layup because, like, the fact that it comes out that she just didn't read that part, yeah. like, that, all you had to do was scroll down and you wouldn't have caused this whole scene and all of this with Adriana. So the joke was perfect. And was. here's the thing like, a lot of people got mad because, you know, it's a man saying something like that to a woman. And obviously, you know, it's not a great look. I don't in this moment, though, dude, he's so pissed and he's been slighted way worse than anybody else there. It's like, dude, you're trying to ruin this man by mm-hmm. saying that he's still married. Let's we've already brought up the point that they're on TV. So she so. needs to talk to his ex-wife. Like, let's get the ex-wife on the, the screen. Fact that he has to bring his marriage license to vindicate himself yep. is ridiculous. And then he hands it to her. And she says, what am I going to do? Like, wipe my butt? Like, I don't need this. Well, that was just her entirely deflecting, which is also, like, now you see why her and Larsa get along so well. Oh, yeah. They just deflect their asses off. And they're like, immediately, Alexia knows that she did something wrong, and she's not going to face the music. So she immediately just goes off the deep end. What am I going to do? Wipe my butt with this? She stands up. She starts yelling at the guy. She deflects and starts talking about the can you read comment. And he's just sitting there, like, smiling, which I thought was great. Because I now I'm like, all right, this dude knows that, like, you don't have to take this seriously. And he knows what he got all. into. You know you're completely right. You know what you were doing, and you know what she was doing. And now you realize that you've won, and who cares? And you can see, like, again, nobody's helping the situation at all. Julia was helping because Julia's sitting right next to him. Yeah. like, all right, come on. Like, this is ridiculous. I do like that we are building a little faction, and you get to see more and more of it this episode mm-hmm. with Nicole and Adriana. Adriana, who seems to have, like, no voice. This show is so confusing with the friends of. I, I'm sorry, I had to just completely stop in the middle of that sentence. There's a lot of friends there of. There are so many friends of, and they're all going to the reunion. They're all real castmates. I just think that maybe like their budget is for the main cast, and then they've got the friends of, and they just pay them a little bit less, and you have to give them a different title. I don't know. But they're all just as important to each other. And they're all great. Yeah, and honestly, they all make for really good TV, even when I hate them. But you get to see Nicole and Adriana showing support. You get Julia, who's just finally happy because she hates so many of these women and she just can't stand them, that she gets to talk to somebody like Nicole, like Adriana. And we saw Adriana inviting Julia to the BBL. It's just so nice to see this faction because now you're going up against Alexia and making her look like shit. Yep. If it's just one person going after her and you get the other people chiming in, you have me and Steele sitting here saying it's intolerable, <laughs> but that doesn't help you in the moment. You need help in the moment and you're finally seeing these women group up and I love it because, look, if we get a little four-on-four clash, I'm all for that because it's equal fighting and it's equal arguing and we get to actually pick teams. And it's great. I think that why with a show like this specifically, why I'm ready for that and excited for that is because there's been other fun stuff happening. Yeah. Like it hasn't been all chaos. It hasn't been all mm-hmm. drama and just mean shit. We've had, like we talked about, we mentioned our reprieves. We've had multiple. We've had a lot of really fun moments with this cast. So now it's like, okay. Now when you hit me with the heavy drama, like I'm ready for it because we've built up good relationships. We've seen some shit getting started. Let's dig into it now. Oh yeah. They did it. They did a great job. And just to kind of finish the scene up, the craziest part to me is after all of this, and I get that you might be a little pissed off because her new man just like dragged you in front of everybody. How can you not just say sorry? How are you non-apologetic for what you've caused? You've made this I can't imagine that that relationship is off to a great start. No, he's like, not. wow, these are your friends. Like, I knew you were a real housewife, but I have to start digging out my public records to defend myself because they have my records on their fucking cell phone. Like, Adriana deserves to find love. And if she found that in this man, Thierry, like, leave them alone. Why are you butting into this whole thing? It, it, all it screams is that you're seeking attention. Either you want to try to be that main alpha on this show and you're trying to, like, knock everybody down a peg so that you stand alone. But... You got caught. You got busted. Your whole plan fell apart. And because he dropped a good one-liner on, you can't even muster up the strength now or later. And that's going to take us in this next scene, the lawyer party. You can't even just fucking say sorry. Hey, my bad. Like, I, I shouldn't have done like, that. I think that's kind of where we're going in the direction that we're going in with a lot of these shows. And we see it in Potomac to the point that, like, I'm nauseous about it. They're going after husbands. They're going after relationships. And it's like, stop. Like, have beef within yourselves. You don't have to bring the spouse into it. You don't have to make up cheating rumors. You don't have to make up infidelity, whatever. It's just pointless. Just keep all the fights between the two of you and don't try to break up nice relationships. Like, th- that's Seriously. really all we have to do. Do we have to add another rule? 
that, that, that kids, now we're gonna say four. Yeah, we yeah. need number four number is four, don't break up nice relationships. Don't break up happy relationships. Yeah, period. That's, that's all we need. Just keep it within yourselves. You signed up for now. I guess Thierry had to like sign a waiver or whatever, but still, he didn't really sign up for this. He's just t- trying to have a nice relationship as a divorced man in Miami, and he's having a good time. You know, Adriana has music videos going on. Maybe he wants to get in the music video. <laughs> Who knows? We got to talk to the crazy director about that one, but. It, it is, I guess, getting a little tiring with the attacking of spouses and boyfriends and whatever the hell you might have. It's just like, find a new slant. It's annoying. And like I said, I mean, that takes us directly into the lawyer luncheon, which the premise of just baffles me. Yeah. I can't imagine, like, having this many legal questions to the point where I'm going to get my group of friends together because we all have legal questions. And ask a lawyer. Are they really legal questions, or are they just asking questions that are pertinent to the season? They're asking questions that are in regards to their storylines to try to make themselves seem like they are right. That's all they're doing. They're saying, is this slander? That's got to be what the producer said. Like, all right, we've got this lawyer coming in, or somebody came up with the idea to do it for Lisa. Which, by the way, Lisa didn't actually need that lawyer to come in. She just needed the distraction of everybody fighting, which I thought was really funny and really nice, actually. Because it like, gets to take her mind off of it. She doesn't have to be involved in the fighting. She just gets to sit back and watch her friends just completely tear each other apart. Which sounds like a pretty fun time. I mean, she clearly needed it. Yeah. And if it's at the expense of everybody else because they're being idiots, like, great. Sure. I mean, that's why we watch the shows. So Absolutely. All she, Lisa's just a Bravo fan in that you moment. Know. Welcome to the club. But you can see the main points of contention are Larsa, Nicole, Alexia, Adriana. Nicole chimes in and asks about slander. And then very quickly, like, she's like, ask your husband about it. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't know what that means. Do you know what that means? He's a lawyer, but he's an insurance lawyer. Oh, okay. But insurance is certainly not. No, that is not slander Anything to do law. with slander. Alexia then goes on to say, well, this lawyer over here, that's not his specialty. That's not what he does. And after Nicole gets through her whole spiel, finally, with Alexia just yelling over her, the lawyer goes, well, I actually deal with that quite a bit. Yeah, slander yeah. and libel. Like I, I know the difference between the two, and a lot of what we do in our law practice has to do with stuff like that. I mean, obviously, the slander in question is Lars's claim that Nicole was hooking up with every doctor at the hospital. Mm-hmm. This part really pissed me off when this came to light. What actually happened? I guess her and her husband took a break. Like they were not together for some period. They were of time. separated. Yeah, were they separated. Yeah. Or I guess, no, because they were dating, because they just got engaged. Well, no, 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 her ex-husband. Oh, was, yeah. okay. So nope. she was separated. Yeah. She had a relationship with a resident at her hospital. While she was also a resident. Yes, a yeah. consenting relationship mm-hmm. between two adults that has nothing to do with adultery, infidelity, and you're going to use that as your ammunition? And then Marisol's like, I got proof, which is a shady dm from god knows who but even in the dm it's like i think that it was during a separation and she was with a resident at the hospital so all you did was say oh she dated somebody else that was also a doctor which i know a lot of doctors a lot of them are married to doctors so that makes a lot of fucking sense sense if you're spending 20 out of 24 hours a day at a Mm. goddamn hospital that you would take interest in another doctor also spending 20 hours a day at a fucking hospital. Yeah, and, and here's, here's the bone to really pick with Alexia, and there's a couple of things that she said that really just pissed me off. When Julia is talking about her relationship with Martina and how it was kind of scrutinized while she was in Paris, and she just wanted to go and have like a huge hug and a big kiss with Martina in the square in front of everybody because nobody was really approving of her, of her marriage, of her relationship, when they were talking about the, the policy that's now going on in Florida— Alexia goes and says, well, Julia, with you wanting to empower women, I think it's funny that you didn't step up for me when that man the other day put me down with that comment. Now, hold on, Alexia, because you're allowed to allow Larsa to say that Nicole slept with every doctor in her hospital, implying that she got her position because she slept around. Mm -hmm. That is way more damning than anything that you could imagine being said to you. I'm sorry, but you're saying that she got her position in her hospital because she slept around. That's terrible for women. That's terrible for women in the workforce. And that's fucking annoying as shit because you can't look yourself in the face and be like, oh, well, this guy can tell me to, that I can't read. But you can look at Larsa and be like, yeah, that's okay that you said that to Julia. That's cool. Not to mention, by using that 
in comparison to like, oh, you are worried about what's going on in Florida and this mm-hmm. and that, and you can't stand up for me in that moment. That is not the same fucking thing. No. At all. For the no. LGBTQ community, not being able to say the word gay in Florida is fucking yeah. insane. And for you to compare that to her not stick or for you to question her woman empowerment by saying she didn't stand up for you in that moment because she stands up for that stuff, like, that's fucking ridiculous. That is such a bold, stupid claim to make. And it just perfectly paints the picture of what Alexia has become. Like, everything that she says is just off the rails. It has no bearing. She's just trying to better herself regardless of what she's saying. Like, I don't even think she knows what she's saying half the time. It doesn't no. make any sense. It barely relates to the topic at hand. Uh-huh. But to bring it back a little bit, you gotta pull me. You gotta reel me back in. Reel back in. Reel me back in. After all of the the talk about what actually happened with this doctor at the hospital, all Larsa can reply with is whatever, whatever, whatever. Because she knows she's wrong. That's your response. There's just no spine there, really. Like she, she really does just say shit. And Nicole's right on the nose. When Larsa feels uncomfortable, she just says shit, and she makes things up. And she just runs with it to try to embarrass you in that moment so that she feels less embarrassed herself, and then she can get the fuck out of there. So now when you're bringing it back up, especially in front of a lawyer, and you realize that you are l- completely wrong, you could just say whatever, 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 and nothing bad's ever going to happen. Again, I just don't understand the dynamic between everybody because everybody seems to support Nicole and understands that what Larsa said is wrong, but nobody's giving Larsa shit directly. No. Like, no, no one. Julia's not saying, and, like, and I like Julia a lot, and I feel like she does stand by her friends, but she doesn't speak up for anything. Adriana, again, does not really have a voice. Gertie is a friend of Nicole's and Larsa, and she's a businesswoman. But I do like In that, that situation, I, just fucking speak up and be like, Larsa, that's terrible to say. That's I agree damning. with you, but I do like that she can play both sides, and she's not playing anybody. I, she, she just is a friend to both and doesn't let she's it like cloud her relationship with, yeah. Yeah, but I think it's nice to see somebody that's like, she's not being skeevy about it. Like, no, she's not being like, skeevy. About it. I would just... and she just says to Nicole, like, I can't believe you sent that fucking mirror. I was at her house. Like, that's just yeah. honest. And like, it, I think I'm just so strongly on Nicole's side. Yeah, that I think I'm like, that I just want is. somebody to fucking help her. You know what? I think that the root of it all is honestly just jealousy. I mm-hmm. think that she is a beautiful, intelligent, very successful. Like, she's done all these amazing things, and I think that Alexia. Is jealous. But what do you think that Lars is getting 40K from feet pics on OnlyFans? I don't know. I don't. By the way, you know what? If you're paying 40 or whatever the fuck you might be paying for that, you can probably just watch Bravo because they just showed you what she was putting on her OnlyFans. Oh, that's a really good point. You don't have to pay for the OnlyFans. They should have blurred it out. Yeah, Yeah, they should have blurred it out. No no free ads. See? I I thought that was funny. I had a little chuckle for myself. Bravo gave her a free ad for her (laughs) her only feet. People still want to see our feet. We've gotten, we continue to get offers. Yeah. <laughs> so if offers aren't if high you enough. start to get down and out, buddy, you let me know. And offers are not <laughs> high enough yet. Yet. But the episode ends. We get to see Slimy Lenny, who, like, it, it's emotional terrorism. How the fuck are you going to go work from home when you're trying to kick your ex wife out of the house? That like you want nothing to do with her, but you're gonna continuously walk by her. She's not the one that tried to end this thing. Yeah. You did, and you're just gonna While force your cameras back are there, in. of course. Yeah, and, and then he's something. trying to like hide behind the wall. Like fuck you, Lenny. He got a little pissed off when the camera came in, but and Colleen pointed this out. Did you notice that his audio was crystal? He was clear? mic'd. He was mic'd up. He was mic'd. Like, son of a bitch. And I'm like, oh well, maybe I was making excuses for him. I'm like, oh well, maybe um, there's a camera that. in there. Not for him, but I was like, oh maybe there's a camera in there or whatever. And then when they walk away and they're just like down the hallway, you can hear Lisa very clearly, and you can hear him very clearly, and you can see her, and she's still a good like six, seven feet away from him. So he's fucking mic'd up. He's a scumbag. Can you like, hear like the little, sweet. like just the little dick energy coming out of this man? He's like. Yeah. He's trying to like tell her like and you need to find a place to live. Do you understand me? Do I need to explain it to you? Yeah. Like no dumb fuck. Everyone heard what you said. It's not some crazy unintelligible thought like she needs to find another place to live because you're trying to kick her out of a house after you're divorcing her for some 20 something Instagram model. Like yeah, we all got you. You don't have to mansplain it any harder, you little bitch. Like <laughs> No, I mean it, you were right. It, little dick energy. I mean, look at the fucking house. Like he wishes he was the president. Why do you think those pillars thing? outside are so big. Oh, yeah, good point. <laughs> shitty, shitty house. Compensating, Ugh. buddy? 
Hey guys, Shooter here to talk to you about Care Of. Care Of is a subscription service that ships high quality, personalized vitamins, supplements, and powders conveniently to your door every month. The way it works is you take a short, in-depth quiz about your lifestyle and health goals for a personalized doctor-backed recommendation, taking the guesswork out of what supplements are best suited for you. Each shipment comes with a customized pamphlet showing you exactly what's in your individual daily packs and why it was recommended specifically for you and your health goals. It's super easy. I just went online, took the quiz. It took me about like five minutes and I just checked all my boxes, made sure that I hit all my health goals for the year. Care of took care of everything. And then they sent me everything in a nice tidy little box that showed up on my doorstep within a couple of days. And I've been taking them ever since. I feel a little bit more energetic, pretty much exactly what they said. And I know that there's a lot more in there that I'll probably see the results for over a long period of time. For 50% off your first Care Of order, go to TakeCareOf.com and enter code BRAVBROS50. Like I said, for 50% off your first Care Of order, go to TakeCareOf.com and enter code BRAVBROS50. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. You know when I'm feeling my best self? When I'm clear-headed and very present. And you know what helps me get there? A little bit of meditation, a little bit of therapy, all of those things that go into self-care and making you your best you. And when you're at your best, you can do great things, but sometimes life gets you bogged down and you may feel overwhelmed or like you're not showing up in the way that you want to. Working with a therapist can help you get closer to the best version of you, because when you feel empowered, you're more prepared to take on everything life throws at you. For those of you that have been listening for a while, you know I've had my own struggles throughout my life, um, mainly with alcohol. And at four years sober now, I can say a massive part of that has been therapy. You know, I talked about it before, but... It's an integral part of your day-to-day, and for those of you that watch Ginny and Georgia, there's a quote in there that therapy is like brushing your teeth for your brain. It's like brushing your brain. It's just maintenance, and it's something that can really help you feel at your best. It's helpful for learning positive coping skills and how to set boundaries. It empowers you to be the best version of yourself, and it's nice to speak with someone in a judgment-free zone. If you're thinking of giving therapy a try, BetterHelp is a great option. It's convenient, flexible, affordable, and entirely online. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. If you want to live a more empowered life, therapy can get you there. Visit BetterHelp.com slash BravBros today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash BravBros. But we are now back in Potomac for, I'm going to say, a purposefully uneventful episode. Yeah. I, like, the more that we watch these shows and the more that they coincide with news breaking, I, I start to see a pattern here where I think that that is intentional. It probably is. So yeah. this episode, I mean, the main points here, because the main point that we're going to talk about didn't even happen in this episode. It happened outside of The Real Housewives world, which is fucking crazy. But before we get there, this one's mainly about, I guess, Mia and Wendy had a little... Rendezvous? Rendezvous. That's a nice way to put it. They had a little rendezvous when they were on vacation. And we're not really sure what happened. Giselle keeps saying that they were doing vagina bumping. Yeah. Um, No one ever said vagina bumping except Giselle, but she keeps running with it. So I think that the story will eventually be, yeah, they bump vaginas. Yeah, I think Giselle finds herself thinking that what she's saying is like iconic and fun. And it's like, all right, Giselle, stop saying that. Just stop it. It's not weird me out. But I think that the the funniest part of it is that Mia's like, oh, well, now I know why it was so tense between us and why she didn't like me so much. It was just sexual tension. She wanted to get that cookie. Are you fine? Come on, dude. Like, come on. You cannot be that far up your own ass to actually think that that's the reason. She definitely is. What? Like, that was crazy to hear that. Like, you really think that there was so much tension because she wanted to hook up with you? Come on. I don't know. Look, not that I, like, wanted to see any of it go down, but what is with this, like, you're in Mexico on a trip for the show that you're on. Right. And they don't show, like, any footage of them hanging out afterwards? No, it was all just when they were arguing and stuff. Like, I want to see them partying. I want to see them, like, having fun and going. Like, we get, it kind of pisses me off because all you get is, like, clips of the club. Like, just stick a camera in the club. Yeah. Like, just, like, let us watch for a little bit more. And I know that, like, sometimes they mislead you and they're like, oh, it looks like they were in the club for a long time. It's like, no, they were only there for, like, 20 minutes. But give us a little bit more. I mean, they're there to party. 
and all you're showing is and some of it's important yeah but like do i need to see them fight over the same thing 15 times in a row no show me a little bit more of the partying and them like making up not just pictures of it the next day or someone's cell phone when you could easily just get some cameras in there i want to watch them playing like flip cup in a bar or like singing karaoke or like not just being mean and pissed off all the time like yeah i want to see them like actually be friends and have fun with each other because it sounds like that's what happens i mean you hear chris and candace start talking about it and candace is like i don't know my last night uh, i woke up in the shower and uh you know that was pretty impressive and chris is like yeah that is pretty impressive (laughs) i think a friend of ours actually woke up in a shower recently (laughs) oh yeah yeah he definitely did um (laughs) true story yeah that's a true story um But, no, yeah, I I agree. I do want to see a lot more of the fun stuff. And, yeah, this could be a purposely meaningless episode because there wasn't really a lot going on aside from that. And there was a lot going on outside of that. Let's just do it. Let's just tear that Band-Aid off and jump into the real news and the real highlight of Potomac this week. And it was from an episode of Reasonably Shady. And we obviously last week got Karen saying that there were some rumors about... Juan Dixon's quote unquote girlfriend in Georgetown. One hundred percent confirmed that this actually happened. So this calls into question and also makes so many things way more apparent. We questioned last week, and a lot of our listeners questioned last week, did Juan's reaction seem suspicious? Yep. And we both said, Yeah, it really did. It it seemed like a weird way to react to this whole thing. But now I think it's now knowing this and knowing that Robin knew about it. It seems like his reactions were for the cameras. It, they were, because she was trying to do it too. She was like, "Yeah, they said you have like a girlfriend." Like, she, if you rewatch it now, it's like, "Wow, clearly she's like acting yeah. and not doing a good job here." And that is easy for us to say in hindsight, but yeah, in hindsight for sure. I'm but sure we'll get shit for it. But yeah, but whatever. I mean, it, it's just there's so many things wrong with this, mm-hmm. and we're gonna unpack it all. The fact that first and foremost, the most obvious thing here. Why was this not discussed during the season? Why was this held off to until now? And then you're going to charge people behind a paywall. You got to join their Patreon to hear the full story. Like, Mm -hmm. first of all, anyone that does that's an idiot because you don't need to go and listen to her explain it away. No. We now know what happened. You're not going to get the full truth. It's the same thing as the Jen Shaw bullshit. And all you really need is one person to go in, by the way. One person can go in and pay for it. And then they will go spill the beans everywhere on Twitter. I think like, that this the, is just how this works. The Bravo Bottoms actually bit the bullet and signed up for the Dear Jen Shaw thing. Yeah. I saw them post that they were going to subscribe. All to right, it. Like, well, we'll have to reach out to the boys. Yeah, we'll have to reach out to the boys and see what they what they dug up there. But um, back to the to the drama in Potomac. It's just the whole reason that you're on this show is to show the drama in your life, mm. right? And then for her on the podcast to then say, well. I was waiting for it to come out. Like, I was ready to defend myself. I was ready for somebody to bring it up, but nobody ever did. Nobody ever did. Blah, blah, blah. That's bullshit. Yeah. Because in that moment when it was pretty much brought up, you did not address anything. You deflected and did a really bad acting job, and Juan screamed at you over the phone. Not only that, but from what I've heard, she's still doing a really bad deflecting job. Uh, She really is. She's saying that, like, oh, maybe they weren't actually, like, sexually active or some bullshit, and... He was, she, the, the woman was on a trip. They needed Juan to fill out her hotel itinerary. Yeah, he didn't stay. And it's like, no, when you have somebody else fill out your hotel itinerary, you still need your name on it. Mm-hmm. It wouldn't be under Juan. Like, like that just doesn't make it, it, it's such bullshit. I don't know what she's trying to do at this point, especially now that she's charging for it. I, I hope this doesn't become a thing where Heather's saying, buy my fucking book, and then doesn't give you an answer for her black guy. Jen Shaw's going to say, buy my Patreon or whatever go to jail and you're never actually going to get the true story because she's just going to lie her ass off. Now we got to do this and Robin's going to deflect the whole situation. Like, I just don't understand. Like, what's next? I don't know, but it... We should put bets on what's next, honestly. What's... I don't know what's next, dude. And I... It's going to be another scandal and we're not going to get shit. Probably. But it's just, for this to come out now, like, there needs to be repercussions for this. Like, Mm -hmm. you can't hold on to shit and then charge people so that you're making bank off of it. It doesn't make any sense. Like you're literally overstepping Bravo. You're you're putting your you're stepping on their toes and showing. Do you think Bravo has to give the okay for this? I think that Bravo is going to be pissed. I think Andy's going to be pissed. Like you can't then yeah, charge for this shit if you unless if you held on to it. I don't think they will get a cut unless this is all part of their plan. But it brings me to probably what pissed me off the most, and it's been a running theme amongst franchises like. The spouses are under attack this mm-hmm. year. 
it's not just dudes. Like, people went after Martina and Julia's relationship. Like, people are just going after spouses. And I think that it's fucking crazy, crazy that Giselle knew about this the entire season. Giselle knew about this the whole time. She knew that somebody was actually being fucking shady, gross, cheating, stepping out. And you're going to try to throw well, Chris. Robin gave him the okay. Do we even know that? It could they could have an open relationship and they're just like not proud to say it. I don't know. I don't think so. Now they're getting married or they already got married. They already got married. That, they so already got just... married. He's cheated on you twice, but Look, whatever. I mean, is it re- is it reasonable or is it shady? Uh, we give, that's like the fifth time you've used that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna put it on the soundboard over here and just click that. But get fucking sued. I just don't get how you can sit there in a glass house and throw stones at somebody with to try to derail from the main point. Clearly, everything that's been going on this season has been trying to take the attention off of her girl, Robin, mm-hmm. and Giselle's been pointing fingers elsewhere. It's horseshit, and it almost ruins somebody else's life, right? Like, that's something that you can't really come back from, and she's throwing around accusations. She's doing this. She's doing that. Meanwhile, she's sitting on one that's actually real. That's yep. true, just because her girl, Robin, she doesn't want to throw her under the bus, but fuck that. If that's the case, just bite your tongue. Don't drag other people Yeah, into we're not it. telling you that you have to spill the beans and you can still get away with trying to bring Chris down. We're just saying just don't say shit about Chris. Don't like, talk about don't, it. Don't try to do anything else. Just sit on your lie and just go have a good season. Like, we don't need everything. It, it's annoying. No, and it's just, like, it's par for the course, honestly, and it's not even surprising. Like, I was surprised initially when I heard that he actually cheated. Mm-hmm. because it has been the running theme that, like, oh, he's stepping out on you. Oh, she's stepping out on you. Like, everyone's cheating on everybody. So I was kind of like, we've heard this before, so we're we really doing this again. It goes to that scene with Chris, and he's even like, oh, we're just going to throw another husband under the bus. Yeah. But turns out Karen's on the up and up, and this brings a lot of things into question with Karen. Mm-hmm. Because we've been like, you know, she's going off the rails a little bit. She's getting a little too comfortable, a little too big for her britches. 100% fact. She dropped a 100% yep. fact, and we thought she was being nuts. So maybe Karen has been truthful the whole time. It I, calls into question the Sharice stuff. Oh, God, the Sharice stuff. Everything. Everything is Charisse not Sharice just getting mark. drunk at the strip club, eating lobster and steak, I, and just I, yelling the things that Karen has done in her life. And then everyone's like, when was this? Was this recently? No, this was years ago. Okay. Like, Do you believe that Karen no. banged a dude in a bathroom at a party? I don't think it's I don't think it's either here nor there. I don't think so either, but those are I some really like don't. I think I think what Sharice is referring to was probably fucking 30 years ago. But it's like it's Do I care? Not it's really. Slander. Should we go back to the lawyer party? Yeah, well, she it's wrote a little it down, slanderous. Maybe it's libel. <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> wrote it down on a napkin while she was eating some fucking steak and lobster. Can we just please what? talk? About the steak and lobster at the strip club. It's disgusting. I right? you couldn't pay me to eat food at a strip club. Oh, my God. I just, Mia's I, talking about how she worked at an entertainment place that served food, and she ate steak and lobster all the time. It's disgusting. Like, I just, eating anything, I can't imagine eating anything at a strip club. And I'm not a strip club guy, but I just can't imagine eating anything there, let alone lobster and steak. Look, I've never been to one, so I can't really comment. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> Is your wife listening? <laughs> <laughs> no, but jokes aside, like, you couldn't pay me to eat any kind of food at a strip club. It's just, I, like, there's just no way. It's no. not It's not hygienic. I can't do it. But, like, other than that, not that much else happened. We had Sharice asking about Michael Darby, and Candace dropped a great one-liner. Like, if someone was going to pay me to leave Gollum, I know. Like, give me half of their money. Like, I'd be on that train immediately. She is so funny. She's had a great that, season. I don't care how mean she is. She is so funny. Well, even when she's mean, she's fucking funny. I know. Yeah. Like, she's got she's got the best clapbacks in the game, period. Yeah. No one else no one compa- can even They really close. don't, because they're so witty, and they're just on, and they're, they're a little bit too mean, which makes them even better. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but the only thing that I want to talk about, and then we can move on to uh, the reunion. The end of this episode, when Blue Eyed Man comes back up, they're calling mm-hmm. into question the Blue Eyed Man and the picture of Karen with allegedly Karen with some dude. Did you hear what Mia said? No. She said, Well, G told me that when you get older, if you oh, really love yeah. your wife, then you give them a pass. Mm-hmm. How do you feel about that? Let's say, here, let me paint a picture. Okay, you well, and she, you and Carl are getting married. No, 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 no. Picture. no I'm going to paint a picture. I'm going to paint a picture. All right, so you and Carl are getting married soon. 
It is, you are 80. How, how many years younger is she than you? Uh, two and a half. Okay, so she's 77 and a half. You're 80 years old. I'll give you ninety. I'll give you ninety. All right. So let's let's make this a little bit a little bit. You think I'm making it ninety? No, I don't. But I didn't want to be the one to be like, oh, you're eighty. You're at the end of your life. Uh, (laughs) So you're you're ninety. She's eighty-seven and a half. Okay. You are completely. I mean, you're still mentally there, but you can't really move around much. You're just kind of a lounge around kind of guy. Yeah. She's still, you know, active. She's still moving around. She still gets out of the house. Yeah. She meets like a cute tennis instructor. The tennis instructor maybe takes a liking to her. She comes home and says, Sean, I love you so much. You're my everything. We've had a wonderful life together. I'm so thankful for all the times we've had together. Uh huh. I got a little more gas left in the tank, and I want to go and explore that with this nice young gentleman. You as 90-year-old shooter, probably angrily sitting in a chair yelling for some reason. What's your response? <laughs> uh, I don't know. It, the scene itself made it didn't make me feel weird i i don't know it's just anytime that mia talks about stuff like that it bothers me but i didn't really get it yeah i'm deflecting i don't really know <laughs> honestly i really don't yeah i guess like if she's still moving around and running around look i don't think that painting a picture of an 87 year old woman having sex is like a great scene for us to do right now but if she wants to go out on dates with other men and I can't do that. Yeah. You know what? I love her enough. Wow. She wants to go live her life. If I'm just stuck in like some rocking chair, which I imagine on the porch, probably with a shotgun yelling at the kids in the neighborhood. Yeah, I see that. Yeah, you know. But still somehow like basketball likes go birds. Yeah, go birds. <laughs> she still somehow can shoot. Um, yeah. No, I, I think I think that's nice. I think that's a nice thing you can do. Now. Now, do you think Ray actually, or do you think G actually said that to Mia, and do you think that Ray should allow that for Karen? I think G definitely said that to Mia. Or rather, Mia said that to G. And he agreed. And then he agreed. Yeah. I I think think that makes way more sense. I don't see Ray doing that for Karen. I don't either. I think that, I heard somebody drop that he hired like a private investigator at one point. Like, I didn't know that. And that was like relatively recent. It wasn't that long ago. So clearly, yeah, yeah. so clearly he gives a shit and like, Mm -hmm. you know. I don't think that he would yeah, agree the, to that bargain. The analogy that Mia made was if you can't go upstairs, then how are you going to go upstairs on your woman or something? It was just uh, – Mia just fucking bothers me. She just <laughs> she thinks she's saying something witty and fun, and it's just annoying and gross usually. But well, where were we? You're, uh, you're you apparently a very a, loving – I, I painted you into here, a buddy. mental box. Yeah, I'm in a glass case of emotion. Yep. Mission accomplished. But that takes us to the grand finale. We had episode number two and the final episode of, thank God, the Salt Lake reunion. Pretty much a snooze fest. Wasn't very entertaining. I think that the segment of the husbands was one of the worst segments in Bravo history. What a waste of time. It really was. It was such filler. I guess they sh- they have to do multiple reunion episodes at this point. They don't have do to. One. You can just do one. Unless just it's just like one. You should take a vote. Put it out yeah. to like Twitter and be like, hey, how many do you want for this season? How many? And let the fans choose because this one needed one and done. I got so scared. Somebody commented on one of our videos and said, I can't believe we have three reunion episodes of this. And I had originally thought that it was only two. And then I got really scared towards the end of this one when there was like three minutes left. And Andy's like, and we'll be right back. And I'm like, fuck me no so we have another one i will yeet myself <laughs> hey, somewhere but yeet back yeah yeet's back yeet myself off a nearby bridge no the third episode was slated to be the one-on-one with jen that's why it was slated oh. for three yeah so that was that's why that got axed what a clusterfuck that was. yeah what a shit show but um God damn it look I, let me just say one thing about andy okay and this is what our third reunion yes i think i just threw a number out there but yeah Third reunion, can you clearly tell who he likes and who he doesn't like on the cast? Yeah, pretty much. It is fucking annoying. It's so apparent, and it's kind of annoying. And, like, Heather had one of the worst seasons ever. Yeah. It was awful. He loves Heather. Clearly. He jokes to her. He makes fun of other castmates and then looks at Heather and laughs. It's ridiculous. He, the way he interacts with Whitney is, like, terrible. Like she's talking about like childhood trauma and whatever, and he's just like one word answering her and like moving on and whatever. And then he goes to Heather, and Heather talks about her stupid fucking black eye, and then like 
whatever, talks about how she has Mormon guilt for drinking, and Andy feels really bad. And, and then you see somebody make a comment about Jen Shaw going to prison. And he's like, ooh, oh, no, not my baby Jen Shaw. It's like, shut the fuck up, dude. Like, you should be – you're like the boss of all these employees, if you will. He's not like the boss. He, he is, is the, the fucking boss. boss. They're all your employees. They all make you money. How about you treat them all equally except for you know, the one that's going to prison? This one over here who's spewing some dumb bullshit about her black eye for like 17 fucking episodes. Like, it just makes absolutely no sense. He plays favorites so much. I will and say. It, it, it hinders the reunion episodes. Sorry to cut you. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, it's fine. Yeah. I will say, I thought that the second half of the episode was good. I thought he had a good second half because he went after Meredith. He did go after Meredith, I which I, I was surprised. That he didn't go after Heather, though. He didn't go after went Heather. After Meredith. But here's the thing. And he didn't really engage with Whitney at all. No, and that, that bugs me. The Heather thing, not so much because if you're reading it from, like, we as viewers are obviously going to dive deeper into it and we've been watching all these episodes mm -hmm. and reading all the comments and blah, 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 and we have very strong opinions about it. If you're looking at it from, like, a friendship standpoint, like, if you are friends with this person, she seems like she's emotionally going through it, at least yeah. if you're close to her, right? Yeah. Like, from the outside looking in, we have different takes, but maybe he felt like, you know, he couldn't go in too hard because she seemed extremely shaky, at least from me watching. Yeah, she like, was. It, but it wasn't even just that. It was also just the Heather... Uh, it was uh, it was also just the Heather Whitney relationship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he no. Was giving he was letting Heather just talk her fucking ass off. He about literally nothing. cut off. He literally cut off Whitney like two or three times in a row. Yeah, and like that. But did I do agree. The the Meredith thing was much better because I even said it like audibly. And he's on a hot streak. Yeah. And okay. there was one moment where Lisa had said something. It was kind of a back and forth between Meredith and Lisa, and I forget exactly what the question was. But Lisa had yelled that. Oh, it was something about Jen. Lisa had yelled that question over. Like, are you afraid of Jen? And you could hear it, but Andy cut her off and then re-asked the question from him, and it made a lot of sense because if Lisa had asked that, Meredith would have been like, no, Lisa, like, I'm not afraid of Jen. Why don't you just stop? But instead, that Andy— was a great so, Meredith impression. Thank you. I was trying to do the frown thing because she always does, like, her mouth is always down like this, and she like, like, talks like, me, 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 me. Uh, Andy will interject and ask a question. And it just me, it, it makes a lot more sense when Andy does it because you actually have to answer that question. So I, I'll give him props there. It was just kind of annoying, and I think I'm just getting tired of him hosting reunion. Bring Nicki Minaj back. No, I mean, I see what you're saying. I think that in the grand scheme of reunions that we've watched with him, this was his best one. Um, yeah, probably. But the funny thing about that side of the room, like those two couches, mm -hmm. those two can't get their shit straight. And this episode just further proved Jen's got something on him. Absolutely. It's just hammered it home because they talk in circles mm -hmm. they don't make any sense they're not addressing what's been presented to them the one time that lisa chimes in meredith's like no oh my god like really blah 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 so she just asked you a question yep and all you do is deflect because it's lisa you already addressed it like mm -hmm. lisa asked a question you have like like why are you feeling any different because she's being sentenced versus being found guilty I don't know. But, guilty. But like, like you didn't. I just need to see how many years she gets before I make my decision on it. Like, why? shut up. She's going to jail. She's going to jail. Like, even Andy said, it. he's like, we know she's going to jail for multiple years. Yeah. Right, everybody? And they're like, yeah, she is. Okay. So let's hear what you have to say about Jen. That's it. And like, I'm glad he kept like hammering at home. Uh -huh. Like, dude, what do you mean? Because, and you didn't see last season, but last season, she legit. So the episode that Jen gets charged, or they mm -hmm. go and like try to find her on they're the spinner van, yeah. they get to Vail. Oh, wow, you have a Vail sweatshirt on. Hell yeah. Sick, dude. Symbolism, what, dude. Did you go there once? Like, what the? Yeah, I did. <laughs> Went there once. Didn't get arrested, Jen. Hey, nice. But if you go back to that episode, she's legit sitting in this giant bathtub having a bubble bath at, like, noon while all the other women are arriving to the house, and she's, like, having a glass of champagne, clearly, quite clearly gloating. And mm -hmm. when Lisa calls her out on the gloating, she's like, no, I wasn't gloating. It's like, go back and watch the tape. Let's. Let's check the film yep. because, yes, you were. You talk shit about Jen literally the entire season. You were anti-Jen. And they did have, like, two or three flashbacks of Mary Cosby. Now that I'm thinking about it. Yeah. She was in there a little yeah. bit. Yeah. yeah. So maybe, see, they're trying to put her yeah. back into focus. I know what they're so doing. That, yep. Uh-huh. I but see what you're doing, bravo. For her to now take this stance that's completely on the other side, and she says it's because she got very credible information that, Jen actually did try to take her own life. Okay. 
we're going to tread lightly, obviously. Like, mm-hmm. If that is true, then uh, I do understand that she has her own personal experience with that. So she wanted to put all the other bullshit aside and step in for this woman and be on her team. Whatever. But for you to go from being so against her if she was guilty, if all of this was true, being completely out on her, you can't be friends with her, to then flip-flop and have no real opinion about it, period, you can still feel for her and help her through like a traumatic time and a traumatic mm-hmm. event and relate to her. You can put your feelings yeah, there aside. There is a middle that. ground there. There is a middle ground, but yeah. for you to completely do a 180 and say one of the most outrageous sentences I've ever fucking heard, I always root for the underdog. The underdog here is the fucking victims, dude. It's not Jen Shaw. She's not the underdog. She was the overdog, and she stepped too far and fucked herself like over. Overdog? Like, uh, overdog, because... You cannot sit there and say, I'm rooting for the underdog. You're really rooting for this woman? How? Let her go and serve her time. And when she gets out and pays her debt to society and pays all those people back, then you can root for her. Then you can say, hey, I hope you get back up on your feet someday because you're in a $15 million hole. But until that happens, you're not rooting for the underdog. You're sending the underdog to prison. Yeah. And I'm so glad this is the last time that I have to rant about Jen Chuck. Wasn't that a cartoon, Overdog? Wonder Dog. Wonder Dog? Wonder Dog. Maybe I'm thinking of the underpants. Captain Underpants? Captain Underpants. I mean, I'm merging two together. Yeah, I tend to do that. Captain Underdog. Captain Underdog. Um, <laughs> no, yeah. And did you notice who was very, very, very quiet about send, potentially sending Jen Shaw money? And I think Heather slipped up when she said, yeah, I didn't send her any money when she was asking she for money. She said I couldn't do that to my but, family. What, do you, what, what does that mean? I don't know. But she did say there were some people on this couch that did send money. And then Meredith had a face, and then she goes, no, 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 I meant Angie Harrington. Oh, but you then think Meredith that. didn't clear, clarify that she did not send money. Interesting. So you I do Meredith. wonder if Heather fucked up once again. Like she she might didn't, have. She didn't get the, the memo on the Special K, and now she didn't get the memo on this. But isn't it very odd? And I do like that Whitney and Lisa on the other end completely understood that right away, mm-hmm. that Chris and Angie Harrington sent money to Jen, and then all of a sudden the shot exposed thing went away. Oh, just yeah. Like guilty, whatever, guilty conscience on Chris Harrington, the fat elf on the shelf husband, sending money to Jen. And then magically, like, everything goes away and everything's forgiven. What do you think about Sharif? Do you think, because I, I. I was I, actually surprised they brought it up on, on the reunion. Oh, my. I'm surprised yeah. that they made that public like that. I wonder if he's going to lose his job. I mean, we don't like to talk about stuff like that, but. I mean, it's very public. It's super public. Very damning. Like, look, I, I think that it's it's obviously a touchy subject, right? Like, mm-hmm. it's it's something that you I don't even really want to speculate on, on here because... I don't know. I mean, I do think that, obviously, it would be crazy to think that he knew nothing about it. I think that it's hard to say that he wasn't at least inquisitive as to where all this money was coming from, especially him being an attorney, as far as how yeah. much he knew... And I'm curious how much was brought to light that maybe here's what I think. All right. I just I it just clicked if he did not know. OK, or if he had inklings, maybe mm-hmm. I think reading through all the court files, maybe at some point he went, fuck, that implicates me. Yeah. And went to her. and was like, look, not only is this going to cost us money that we don't have. This is damning. Yeah. We got the boys. Like, we need to talk about this. Like, that would make sense to me if that did happen. I'm not saying it I did or did not. I think that's probably what the plea deal was, and that's why she flipped. Maybe. I, and we could speculate on this for days, but that makes a lot of sense where it, it, it really comes down to do you want your children to grow up with both of their parents in prison? I yeah. mean, obviously, yeah. Sharif would take a, a lighter sentence, but even if he's gone for a year, what are you going to do? You're going to have your kids go live with somebody else? Like, no. So here, we'll give you six and a half years instead of, you know, four and a half, but Sharif gets to stay out of it. Yeah. I, that could make sense. It could make sense, and I think that's the best way to put it. Yeah. We don't know what the fuck happened. I'm not saying one way or the other. I'm saying if that did happen, that's... I think we're going to have to take the bar. I'm uh, not so taking we can, the bar. Why not? Oh, so we can actually be... Yeah, so then when people comment, we law. can be like, fuck you. All right, well, I'll, the bar. I'll... You go past the bar, and then you can talk to me. I will speculate on one thing, okay? okay? I will speculate on one thing, and again, this is purely speculation. This holds no weight whatsoever. Here's what I think with the left couch, 
all right, with Meredith and Heather, because all I got to see tonight was both of them not being able to answer questions, going with the I don't remember defense or the I don't know defense Mm -hmm. or the I never said that, even though we know they said that. I think that Jen gave them money, and I think that that money was put into their businesses in some way, shape, or form, and I think that they are aware that they accepted stolen funds. I don't think they knew at the time. I think that they also both seemed aware that some sketchy shit was going on. Mm -hmm. So I think that they turned a blind eye to what was happening, and I think that they possibly got a handout. They used that money into their businesses, and if they slip up or if they throw Jen under the bus, Jen's got that ammo. She's sitting, waiting to go to prison. Maybe she has a bad day, wants to throw that out there in the world and fuck them both over. Honestly, I feel like Jen would probably do that immediately anyway. I, I don't put anything past her. She yeah. robbed millions from elderly people. It's horrible. I could see her being like, I'm not the only one going down. I gave these two money. Yeah. yeah. So I think that would I'm, make the most if sense. If I'm to speculate, yeah. again, this is the speculation station. I got my tinfoil hat on. Mm-hmm. Not saying it did or did not happen. I'm just saying that would make sense. That would make a lot of sense. Certainly would. That takes us to the question portion from Coco Nutso. Is Angie H's money to Jen a way to come back as a housewife or to forgive Chris? Go birds. That's actually on there. That is actually on yeah. there? Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, I think it's just forgive Chris. I think it's, like I said, I think it's the guilty conscience on Chris's part. Because Heather made a point to say Chris like three or four times. So I think he gave the money. He felt bad about the shot exposed, even though he used it to make fun of Lisa. But whatever. Fucking annoying. Uh, yeah, so the latter. I agree. From Carla Carlita, do you think Robin should be fired for her Patreon fiasco? It depends if Bravo gets a cut or if Bravo okayed it, I guess. I, I don't know. I, hopefully Bravo didn't okay it because I don't want, like I said, I don't want to go down that path. I can't imagine they did. That would I make no sense. I don't think it's sense. a fireable offense. I just think it's like, it definitely warrants a warning of some kind. Now, Potomac does have too many housewives. So I don't know. Between that it would break up the Green Eyed Bandits, which it probably wouldn't would. be a bad thing. It'd be interesting to see Giselle without, without a partner in crime. Yeah. I think that between that and the case that Juan Dixon is named in, mm-hmm. I think between those two things, they might step back, whether it's of their own free will or maybe Bravo asks them to step away for at least a season. That's what I think. Yeah, I could see that. <laughs> From not Courtney stage, who do you think would win in a fight, the Jersey husbands or the Salt Lake City husbands? Well, the Salt Lake City husbands are made of metal, and metal is typically very hard to break down. Yeah, because they are robots. Mm-hmm. So I don't think... Although th- Justin's not. No, Justin's not a robot. Justin, I like Justin. I like Justin. But I... Jolly dude. First of all, the Jersey husbands are from the Northeast, so yeah. they can definitely throw hands. Second, I think it would be a fair fight. Robot versus a bunch of Jersey meatheads. I think that that's a, a fair fight. I think that comes on after Celebrity Deathmatch on MTV. <laughs> Jersey versus Salt Lake. <laughs> ah, from Clelly M. Makes a very good point. Has Meredith ever been anything but monotone about anything? No, that's uh, you can go back to minute uh, 54 to hear my Meredith impression. Very monotone. From Rebecca Tad, if you could watch the Super Bowl with any housewife, who would you pick? Go birds. Hashtag go birds on that one. Fuck. That's a tough one. Because you got to pick somebody who's not going to take away from the game and be annoying. I'm going to say Garcelle. She just posted the go birds thing last week. Ah, so, good yeah. point. Good point. Um, you got to pick somebody different. You can't piggyback. All right, settle down. Um, piggyback. I got it. <laughs> um, I'm going to go with either Crystal. I'm going to go with Crystal because Crystal's talked talk some shit to to us this year about football yeah so i'm gonna go fan. with crystal all right because her team's not even in the super bowl they didn't even make the playoffs nope and they don't even have a first round pick sucks <laughs> and for our last question of the evening from charnik one do you think ashley and giselle used chris b as a distraction to avoid Juan's scandal we touched yeah, on a little bit we did and i i did see a couple of reports and by reports i just mean tweets that it looks like people, <laughs> it looks like somebody caught them, them being uh, Giselle, Robin, and Ashley, and then Karen kind of tagged along. 
Uh, they went out to lunch, and supposedly they've been caught before making their storylines for the season, before the season starts. Oh. So that's what they think was going on there, was the takedown of Chris, and then, you know, kind of going after various other people, just to try to deflect away from the whole wand thing. But who the hell knows, honestly? Be a fly on that wall. Yeah, seriously. But um, But that's all we got for tonight. Quick reminder to give us a follow on Instagram at brav underscore bros. Give us a, what? Oh, I was doing a dance. Quick reminder to give us a follow on Instagram at brav underscore bros. Follow us on Twitter at brav underscore bros. And follow us on TikTok at brav bros. No underscore, just brav bros. And also, don't forget the bros are on Cameo. If you want us to give you a little shout out, convince your significant other to start watching Bravo or talk some shit about the birds, we are available for your use. Not for wow. feet pics. <laughs> <laughs> what a way to put that. Well, yeah, use us. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. Don't we'll, we'll no, repeat it. Is that good? Nope. Lastly, subscribe to us on YouTube. We are subscribable, so go ahead and give us a little click there. Mm-hmm. Um, the last thing I want to say before we send you guys off, we have an exclusive interview coming up. It will drop probably next week at some point but uh it's something that you're going to want to hear in regards to potomac it's somebody that's taken center stage unwillingly this season and we're going to hear his side of the story if that doesn't tell you who it is (laughs) you're not watching the fucking show but that's all i got you got anything else nope brav bros are out of here go birds